Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert maths teacher so that all your children love their maths and become fluent, creative and confident with it. And dyscalculia is a word that's unknown in your school, in your classroom. This is the third video in my series on teaching maths in English Year One, that's our second year of maths teaching. In this video, we are going to focus on how to thoroughly teach the numbers 1 to 20 and that involves really thoroughly teaching the second structure of number which is the structure of the numbers to 20 in fives and ones. The first video in this series which explained what expert math teaching is is available by the link at the top of the screen now and that also covered baselining for year one. And the second video, which covered the first structure of number in year one, which is the part part whole structure, which children need to study before they first encounter subtraction, is available via the link that's at the top of the screen. Now, in this episode, I'm going to cover what the structure of fives and ones is, why it matters to teach it now, how to thoroughly teach the numbers to 20, and I'll also include a tip for listening to children rather than listening for the maths you want to hear, which I'm including in every episode just now. So what is the structure of fives and ones? Well, on screen now, you can see the numbers to 20 shown as tallies. Tallies are organised in the structure of fives and ones. You build up to five, which is one group, and then six is a group of five and a one, and so on. And now on screen, you can see the same structure shown through 10 frames, which are quite commonly used in, a, in several schemes now. And it is exactly the same structure. It's building up to a five and then starting a new group as you move on through the numbers six to 10. You've completed two groups and you start the next group for the number 11 and so on. And that structure can also be clearly shown with clothes pegs on a coat hanger. I'll show you that in just a moment. It's here in the rake and rake, or the math rack as it's called in America. It's in the abacus, it's in the Japanese soroban. It's in your fingers and toes. What number's that? Shown with the same structure. And to what extent do we use it as adults? Well, how many lines are there there? It's pretty difficult to count, isn't it? What if we show it as a tally? Same number of lines much easier to count. And similarly, how many clothes pegs are there on this hanger? Show it in fives and ones, how many clothes pegs? Much, much easier to count. As adults, we recognise this structure. It helps us to work fluently with number. So there's an underlying structure here that we all know, but most of us aren't consciously aware of. So why does it matter to teach it now? We all probably learnt that structure without being deliberately taught it. It's something you become aware of as you experience more number over time. So why does it matter to teach it deliberately to our children? Well, the reason is what our maths curriculum is taught so young. We are really demanding that all our children are fluent with the calculations in, within 20 by the time they're six. And that's much younger than has ever been done or recommended in history. So for them to become fluent with those calculations, they really need to know this structure. So we've got to deliberately teach it or a lot of them won't get it in time. If they haven't got the structure, they're still looking at something like this and they're not seeing the 17. They're having to count the lines one at a time that makes their maths far too slow. And if we think about a calculation like 17 subtract 4, it's tempting to think that children do that by counting back 4, 16, 15, 14, 13. But in fact, the children who are most fluent with maths can pretty much see the numbers. Here's 17 and they can see the 4 and they can see the remaining 13. So they have a lot of structural support to build their confidence in what they're doing with maths. And all our children need that structural support and that confidence. They mustn't just follow the slow ways. They need the quick ways too. And they can have those ways if we deliberately teach them. 
So how should we teach the numbers to 20 in year one? Well, the first thing to recognise is that this is the most important part of maths in year one. Although we have numbers to 100 on our curriculum, it is far more important that we get this right or we're not laying secure foundations for the future and some children are going to really struggle. So you need to allow plenty of time to focus on each number and I would say you need to start at about the number five because below that children can see groups of numbers instantly as that number in different ways. If you want to check that there's a link to the episode which explains that above now. So if we start at the number five for each one children need to be able to see it instantly in the structure of fives and ones. So you're used to having give me five and give me ten but really we want give me six give me seven and for numbers greater than ten we can put our fingers next to our feet I'm not quite flexible enough to really demonstrate this here but if your children are sitting on a mat they can easily put their numbers next to their feet and a thumb next to your feet is eleven and so on there's twelve that next to your feet is seventeen so you can really work with the children on making sure they instantly have that recognition of the numbers. They should also be able to see it in at least one other representation, whether that's clothes pegs, which are great for teaching from the front of the class, or 10 frames. Got some lovely 10 frames here. These came from TTS, who are a supplier I recommend, because they're just so efficient at getting stuff to you and they'll say you like one item, which is great. This is, and with their two-sided counters, or you can use egg boxes as your 10 frames and the two-sided counters fit beautifully in then or you can put any other object in but make sure you fill up a five before starting the next five that's the point of the fives and extra structure and the point of 10 frames although you can use them for other things too but the most important thing is to get it into children's fingers and toes because they've always got them with them even in exams where no apparatus is allowed and they can get their fingers and toes out if they need to so children need to be able to recognize the number as fives and ones they need to identify the number when you say it they need to be able to read it they need to be able to know how to construct it even if they can't write well yet they can do it big and learn the construction of the number they need to know one more and one less and if you build up the numbers sequentially they can do any number less because they've done all the previous numbers and they can see it in the apparatus they need to partition that number and create additions to it. And we covered that in episode two, if you want to look at that again. They need to solve missing parts in addition. So if your focus number is 12 and 12 is partitioned into three and something, what's the other number? And then we need to turn those into subtractions and they need to solve subtractions from that number. And it's your job to make it as fun as possible. Link it to the topic of the day. If you're doing Beatles, we can do it with Beatles. Whatever interests the children. It's great sometimes to say, well, how can we make this interesting today? What objects would you like to use to do our maths with? So if you're struggling to know how to plan your maths to achieve all these things, there are term per page planning guides that are completely linked to the national curriculum in the expert primary maths teacher planning group. You can download them for free and you can chat about anything to do with maths, primary maths there. So that's the core number work for today. But I always said as well as teaching structures, we need to get the children unpacking their own thinking and get you as a teacher listening to their trains of thoughts rather than trying to listen for the trains of thoughts you want them to have. And today's strategy is, and another one, and it is simply to use that phrase as often as you can in your teaching. So it's really obvious how you can do this in your work with numbers to 20. If you're partitioning a number, say we're working on the number 13, can you find an addition to 13? And another one, and another one, and another one. And you just want to keep going until they are absolutely determined that they've found them all and they're trying to explain to you why they've found them all and that's quite wonderful and you can do with the same with subtractions you can focus on a number let's do subtractions from that number or you can focus on the structure the general structure of fives and ones and let them play around with it and come up with their own subtractions that they can truly see and deeply know and instantly recognize 
and let them be creative with their addition and subtraction work within the numbers to 20. And another one, and another one. And if they're coming up with lots of examples and they can't notate yet, then of course they can photograph them with the iPad so that they can prove to you what they've done and start to look back on their own examples and work out which ones they've done and which ones they haven't. So to recap, today we've focused on the detail of how to teach the numbers to 20 and we've explained this fives and ones structure that is so crucial and needs to be thoroughly taught. We've talked about why it matters and then we've looked at the and another technique for listening to children and getting them all to think for themselves and work creatively themselves. I have no resources to promote these videos so if teachers are going to be able to find them through Google searches and so on we need to interact with them so if you could share them to groups that's really helpful if you could subscribe to the channel if you could comment on them on YouTube that would be great I love your comments they're just tremendously helpful even if you could just give us a like click on the like button that'd be wonderful in terms of understanding them could you put some departmental time aside to pick one of these videos and really pick it apart and work out your thoughts on the teaching topics that I'm raising if so I would love feedback feedback would be great criticize it into the ground I love criticism if you're able to donate you'll see me looking much happier and less stressed this week because my laptop is back and working and somebody made a significant donation to help last week thank you donations can be used to help to fund collaborative videos with other experts like the one I'm posting a link to now on motor sensory integration which is just a very special video on how to help children and there are many of them who are struggling to take information in as fast as they need to take it in this is the address for the Facebook group if you'd like the free download documents or you'd like to chat to other teachers about primary maths teaching. In the next video, I will start to look at the numbers to 100. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.